Hey guys, Magaz here connecting you to Airsoft. Today on the Pants Party, we are looking at another interesting take on the enhanced combat trouser, the Rogue Mark III from Bulldog Tactical. Bulldog is a British company founded by a Royal Marine named Phil, who after having a critical failure of a piece of gear in the field, decided to do something about it and created a brand dedicated to superior military equipment. Bulldog make their own apparel, combat uniforms, plate carriers, pouches, and load bearing equipment. Now we have a little bit of background on the company. Let's take a look at the product itself. The Rogue Mark III trousers are an enhanced combat trouser that takes a lot of features and inspiration from the Cry design, but in a more minimalist fashion. The trousers are available in MTC, which is a copy of Multicam, MTC Tropic, MTC Night, French CCE, Coyote, Audi Green, Black, and at one time, Dutch DPM. It is the DPM trousers we'll be taking a look at today. I can't speak to the quality of the fabric of the rest of the colorways are made from, but the Dutch fabric is a very solid 65 cotton, 35 polyester ripstop. Pattern wise, it matches up to this surplus Dutch fabric I have, so I have no doubts it is legit fabric. From the top, we have a thick and very high waistband with padding at the rear. The waistband sits very high when worn properly, all the way to the small of the back. Because of the height of this, the crotch seems to sit very snug. As a result, there isn't a lot of room in there for the goods. So with this in mind, I would recommend buying at least a size larger than you would normally buy. The waistband has five belt loops capable of accepting a 1.5 inch belt. These loops are reinforced with bar tacking and they have a small hoop for a carabiner at the bottom. The waist can be adjusted with two hook and loop cinches. These do not feel like the most robust of cinches, but they do the job fine. The waist is closed by a large Velcro flap, as you would expect from a standard design G3 trouser, but the flap feels a little bit longer. The zipper is YKK branded and very smooth. The hand warmer pockets are at first glance nothing to write home about. They are exactly where you would expect them, but due to how high the trousers fit, they do seem to be a little tight. Inside the hand warmer pockets, you will find they are constructed from a breathable mesh fabric and contain the elastic drawstrings for the knee pad height adjustment and a secondary pocket. This secondary pocket sits at the back of the hand warmer and is zip closed. Again, the zippers are YKK branded. This is great. However, as you can see in the B-roll here, the right hand pocket was not finished properly, allowing the slider to run all the way off the end of the zipper. Inside the pockets, it is just a basic hand warmer pocket. I do like this idea. It's kind of like an anti-pick pocket pocket and gives you a little extra security for your valuables. On the right leg, below the hand warmer pocket, is the classic condom pocket. Reinforced with some webbing strap and bar tacking at the edges, this is just an open top simple pocket and it is not mirrored on the left hand side. Unlike pretty much every other enhanced combat trouser, these opt to not include the upper thigh pockets. Next, we have the cargo pockets located on the side of the leg. These pockets are secured by two Velcro strips and are bellowed to allow expansion. There are no elastic straps or magazine pouches inside these pockets like other trousers. They can be cinched tight with an elastic drawstring though. Normally, we would have the ankle pockets, but Bulldog chose to omit these from their design. The back of the knee features a pair of cinch points for adjusting the size. This is secured by Velcro. This concept is repeated at the ankles, but executed differently. This time with a single strap that is reminiscent of the Pentagon Wolf design, again, secured by Velcro. The rear pockets are zip closed and have a flap to protect them. The seat of the trousers is reinforced with an extra layer of fabric. The knee pad pockets are pretty close to your standard affair, but are not surrounded or backed by a four-way stretch fabric. To address the elephant in the room, there are no stretch panels on these trousers. This negates the need for a cover flap when the knee pads are removed. The included knee pads certainly serve their purpose, but they're not as well made as say the TMC or Emerson knee pads. They feature a gripped surface and are slightly more rigid than a standard G3 style knee pad. They look shape-wise close to a G2 design, the neoprene base is very rigid and offers a lot of protection on its own. It does make inserting the knee pad a little tricky though. 
These are the same size as the standard cry opening, so all of your favorite knee pad inserts should fit without an issue. That is pretty much everything in terms of features. The stitching is reasonably well done, particularly the bar tacks that feature in stress points. That being said, there are a few areas that extra care and attention could have been given, namely that hand warmer pocket zipper and the adjustment cinches on the ankles. In terms of usage, I haven't fielded these ones and I don't think I will be doing. That isn't down to the quality of the garments. I have no doubt that they will hold up and will not tear or fall apart. It's the fit that I don't get along with. Traditionally, I wear a 28 inch waist with a 30 inch leg. I'm a hobbit. This pair was sized as a 28 waist, 32 leg. No factor, I thought. They might be a bit baggy on the legs because of the extra couple of inches, which they are. The issue I have is that they seem to fit tighter than any other 28 inch waist trousers that I own. That coupled with how high the waistband sits on your body, basically over your stomach, they aren't comfortable to wear. I find my nuts are pureed and if I have to sit, they become horribly tight around the stomach area. I think if I had opted to go upper size, the waist issue might not have been too bad, but I assume there would still be a tight squeeze on the boys. Just something to bear in mind if you are thinking about picking these up. Are they on par with the quality of other Cryclones? Without a doubt, these trousers definitely sit alongside TMC and Emerson in terms of quality to price ratio. I said in an Instagram story that these were the second worst trousers I had reviewed. At that point in time, given how perturbed I was about the fit and the zip situation, I think I was heavily biased with that statement. After sitting down to write the script and handling them, looking over the stitching in detail and feel of the fabric, they aren't as bad as I first thought. They aren't my favorite design, but they certainly are a serviceable pair of enhanced combat trousers for airsoft use. If you have any questions about these pantaloons, drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Before I leave, again, I'd like to give a reminder about the Patreon that helps support this channel. If this review has been helpful to you, go join the minimum tier for a month and see your name in lights for all time like these top tier blocks here. Don't forget to subscribe. There are plenty of review videos in the works both as part of this series and in the Airsoft Replica series. Thanks again, I'm Magaz and remember kids, the air may be soft, but our balls are hard. Also click on this playlist here to see the rest of the videos in the Pants Party series.